So as we move forward, um, this is kind of a new territory for us of the gap, trap, and fold stuff. Um, Coach Mazzoni, when he got to, UC, or, yeah, to UCLA, uh, Adrian Clem is our, was our O-line coach, is the O-line coach there, uh, came from SMU with June Jones in the run and shoot. And they had a walk-on linebacker turned running back set every SMU record. And considering they had the Pony Express in the 80s, it's pretty impressive that a walk-on linebacker was multiple 1,800-yard rushing seasons there over three years. And they basically did it off of one play, a trap play. Um, so that was where we started with a lot of our trap stuff. Uh, we added a gap play this year, and it's actually a return of a play for any of you that have been around the system a while. Shark went back in for about two days this year, and then it went back out. Uh, it made a, a little special appearance. And then fold, we have a fold play, but it's, it's just draw. Um, you can run it full speed blocking, or you can run it as a delay on the draw. We had a lot of success with it when we had a running quarterback. This year, even though we threw the ball quite a bit more on called passing, um, we didn't have as much success. We didn't even really call it as much this year, but it's a great uh, play, I think, as a basis to start with offense, especially with the RPO system, because it's a great way to identify who the player you should be throwing off of is. So we're going to go through all of those. Um, the gap and traps only got a few clips each, and then we're going to spend a lot of time in draw because there's so many different ways to run it and dress it up. And it kind of is the perfect example of what we want to do if you guys were in any of the earlier ones, which most of you look like you were, is we want to run the same thing in as many ways as possible and just keep changing the presentation to run the same stuff. Um, so let's just go right into it. All right, so Tampa is our uh, first one. That's the trap and power scheme. Shark is the gap scheme, and Detroit is the fold scheme. All right, uh, Tampa. Okay, now this one is a little bit different. It's probably a little bit different than a lot of guys do it. You're going to run it as a trap and power, okay? So this is where, for the O-line coaches in here, this is for you because this is where you have to be honest with yourself about your kid. When you go into a game and you're going to run long trap or one back power, especially against the four down teams, is matchup wise as a tackle, do I match up to him very well or no? If I can control this situation, then you're going to turn it into one back power and he's going to base this guy out and then the puller is going to turn inside. And you have the calls along the line of scrimmage to do that. If the matchup doesn't favor me, then we're going to long trap it and you're going to give a read call down the line of scrimmage. And you can do it one of two ways. You can just purely down block or double team if it's a three tech up to the play side backer because we're not pushing it back side. We're blocking on the front side only is up to that guy or you actually kick step show pass to get him into a pass rush situation and then long trap him with the guard. So it's, it all depends on what it is. And it's very um, ever moving and evolving because each week it could be, hey, when we're running this to the right, it's always trap because you're not going to win this week against that guy. But then when you're going left, it's always going to be power because we have a better matchup on the left side. And then the next week it might be flipped. All right. Normally, it's the offensive line coach that does it. Uh, we had some older, experienced players the last two years at the tackle position that they actually did it in game. They would make the call. So that we carried, we've carried all of them in each week, but it's the same play to us. Okay, so right here, 4 1 box, they'll still work to the mic. Right here, hard read, so they're going to call for the double team which he will not, because he's on the double team, he will not flash this guy. It's just a pure double team here, working to the play side backer, uh, gap hinge for the backside end, and then the quarterback has to take care of both edges. This is, as I was actually talking to one of the coaches earlier, is it is a very, very special play if you can get them into that five, five and a half man boxes where they start playing both, same, like more of a traditional four, three guy that you're playing against. When he plays both overhangs in the gray area, it's the perfect defense to run this against. Because then you're running uh, double screens or all hitches, and you're throwing off those edge guys, but you can block all five guys in the box, and you don't have to just sit on Zorro with the quarterback pulling the ball when they start squeezing in. I'm sorry. 4-1, uh, same thing, just going the other direction. This On this side, on the left side, this is where he could call for the flash, show pass to get the guy into a pass rush, and then climb back to the mic right here if that was what we were going into the game plan with. 
Okay, right here, is they're going to show the double team here, and that is actually completely drawn wrong. These two should be actually working to this guy. Come on, stay here. They should be taking care of that guy. That's not their guy. As soon as that guy's back in the box, they got to do it. But that's where game plan wise, you got to know what the numbers are. If you know that that's an overhang or a nickel Sam, tell your line to completely disregard him and always push it back to this guy and let the quarterback throw off of that guy. That's where you just got, you got to do the scouting of certain defenders. It's just like when you're scouting on the odd front, um, which I'm going to get to in a second, but game planning note, when you're game planning against the odd front, is the, is the fourth rusher 75% of the time the same guy? Account for him as a fourth down lineman. All right, so it's the same thing when they start bringing guys in the box. If he's a nickel Sam guy, don't count him. It's just like what we were talking about with the safeties coming down. Don't let the line push themselves to him if he's not really an inside interior player. Okay, right here, Tampa even. Ah, oh, come on. Right here, they're going to show the base. Right here, they're going to base here, push back to the three. So he's going to insert in the first gap that opens. So he's going to pull to pull to the play side backer, but if it closes because of any type of game with this guy outside and the possible stunt, he will go all the way around it. So he's got to be able to read out of it and go all the way around. Okay, against a 3-2, we're not necessarily big fans against it unless they're playing the odd front with five so we can actually get a base. That's, if we can get actual base blocks right here, then we're good with it. But when they start getting into this stuff where they're in the four eyes, it's got to be uh, reads right here and trap whoever the edge guy is, which leaves, again, drawn wrong. He should be blocking up to this guy, and that's the quarterback's guy. Okay, So it's always the backside inside backer that the quarterback would have to have if there's two inside guys. 